There are some people, when we talk about international struggle, the first thing that they usually say is that we have our own problems back home. Why is M1 in Palestine when we got stuff jumping off in Brooklyn or Houston or Los Angeles? Explain, explain how that's, why it's important. Well, I think what we're, what we're looking at is uh, part and partial uh, is, uh, of the same struggle. Um, and the way I want to explain that is because um, right now the, the, our movement is culminating uh, into new leadership, uh, new growth. Um, we have always been an international uh, cadre. We have always had international forces. We have to see ourselves as a, a movement without borders. And, and even though everywhere we are locally, the fight is important, um, this, this idea is not a new one. Um, around the world, uh, during the 1960s, revolution was the main trend around the world in South America, in Vietnam, in China, and in, in, inside the borders of the United States. It was revolution that was the main trend, not reform, not even civil rights. I'm talking about outright revolution that became the main trend. Mm. And we were able to, uh, to uh, bolster you know, a, a lot of the, uh, the, 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 the momentum that we had at that time uh, inside uh, different organizations like the Black Panther Party or the Republic of New Africa uh, from forces outside the U.S. who were sympathetic to these forces and had formed organizations uh, around the world that could see uh, a united struggle uh, within inside the U.S. would break down uh, the forces of imperialism uh, off the neck of the people even faster than if we did it alone and individually. So, and that's the, this is part and parcel to the same struggle that we see here. Of course, we have to continue the local work. And that's where you find me, of course, because this is where I live. But uh, I think we have to have representatives who are in solidarity everywhere around the world. Uh, you know, uh, I was just at a, at a conference called Grind for the Green in uh, San Francisco, California, and they asked me, well, well then, you know, well, and, and I was in there talking about, because I was one day back in from Palestine, from Gaza that day, and I, I had to tell them that it, it is uh, the, the, the economic racism uh, issue is, is part of process to the same thing that brought Martin Luther King to the forefront fighting with the with the uh, with the garbage collectors um and and for, uh, brought him um right on the front line uh fighting with many members of our working class community because what ends up happening is these issues affect us 30 years later or these issues begin to be part and parcel to the same thing that we, but that's going on around the world right now so that's why i'm involved i think if we take the, the ability or take the time uh take the sacrifice that takes to stand up for uh injustice everywhere then it's easier for us to fight injustice right here within our borders right here at home the same bombs that they're dropping uh in palestine were made right here in america as some of the same chemical warfare that they plan to use with depleted uranium uh in in uh um, in in, uh, in in palestine or in gaza or in the west bank or ramallah which is the same kind of uh, chemical warfare that they use when they put mercury and high fructose corn syrup and spread that throughout our community. So we have, we're fighting uh, the same enemy on different fronts. You know, I think uh, we're talking with M1. He's just returned from Gaza. Um, he was part of Viva Palestina. Um, he was out there with about 200 other people, including Cynthia McKinney and New York City Councilman Charles Barron. And he's uh, letting us know, for those who are just tuning in, why it's important that we as black folks here in the United States who find ourselves under oppression should be involved in these international struggles. Um, and based upon what you're saying, is this why when I went to, uh, when I've been overseas in places like Beirut and Kenya, um, I found that people that were there fighting their own oppression uh, always had a, a, a type of reverence for like the Black Panthers or in some cases I found that the Black Panthers were actually influenced I think you said by other international struggle but it seems like they're very much aware of our freedom fighters whether it's Public Enemy, yourselves and others who are, are, are strong artists and organizers as well as you know um, some of the organizations that have been around that's the reason why is that true or 
That's right. That's exactly that's exactly what I see. I've, I've been able to gather the same kind of sentiments in, in places that I've gone. Um, I see a mirror reflection, a reciprocal relationship between uh, the height, heightening of our political maturity and what's happening in different places. Um, you know, there, the, the Free Mandela movement uh, uh, in, in the United States began, began to be something that was really huge. And I think definitely because of our relationship with Africa and South Africa to be specific, but also just the fact that we saw ourselves 30 years ago going through the same kind of apartheid in this country called Jim Crow. And so I, I do see people everywhere we are learning from our struggles. And I think that it's going to be our ability to grow more uh, and be courageous because right now, uh, you know, the, 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 the media, the mental, uh, the, the mental barrage the oppression is on. Uh, that's the, every every channel we turn to, every song we listen to, every dance we do, every you know instance magazine we look in. The you know the, the dumb down is upon us. So I think the way we're going to reach to get some something that we've not the, not been able to get that inspiration or the, those ideas or that courageousness is a, a lot of times going to come from outside of the board for each each one of us everywhere we are. That's right. If they're saying hip hop is dead, it ain't dead around the world. Maybe just uh, <laughs> maybe just on uh, Hot ninety seven than the KMLs of the world, huh? <laughs> Definitely. You know, what's so funny is I ran into a rapper. Uh, as soon as I got into Gaza, his name is Aiden. He's from a group called PR, or Palestinian Rapper. Right, I know and them. I, yeah, go ahead. Exactly. And this guy had exactly that same shirt on with exactly that, that same quote you just said. It said, hip-hop is not dead, it lives in Palestine. And yeah. it was incredible. The same thing you just said. Listen, that ain't that crazy.